All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. December 18th, 2019, a date that will live in history. The ayes have it. On this day, President Donald J. Trump assured his place in the record books for all the wrong reasons. Article 1 is adopted. The question is on adoption of Article 2. Impeached for abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, the final votes very nearly along straight party line. Article 2 is adopted. The 45th president, just the third in U.S. history to be impeached. December 18th, a great day for the Constitution of the United States, a sad one for America. The divisions in Congress reflect a deeper divide in the country at large. In Kalamazoo, Michigan, Michelle Wong watched at home. So I've been watching this and listening to this off and on all day today. Tonight, she was cheering the Democrats on. They know he's guilty. They know it. Over in Battle Creek, Michigan, half an hour away, a very different reaction. Trump voters gathered there for a rally. Our colleague Martha Raditz was there. It's obviously... It's biased, and I think it's political, and it, it's going to look bad in the history. I think he's getting railroaded. I do. I think that the Democrats had him marched the moment he got elected. The president himself had these thoughts on today. It doesn't really feel like we're being impeached. Do you? <laughs> the country is doing better than ever before. We did nothing wrong. We did nothing wrong. President Trump was on stage when he learned the vote had passed. Oh, I think we have a vote coming in. So we got every single Republican voted for us. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. It was really quite extraordinary to be in this room at this rally in Battle Creek, Michigan, right while that vote on impeachment was going on, a historic day but you really wouldn't know it here. Tonight's vote followed six hours of debate in the House of Representatives. Speaker Nancy Pelosi called it a national civics lesson, quoting the pledge every school child recites weekday mornings. To the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pelosi invited members of Congress to reflect on what that means. The republic for which it stands is what we are here to talk about today. A republic, if we can keep it. We gather today under the dome of this temple of democracy to exercise one of the most solemn powers that this body can take, the impeachment of the President of the United States. Party loyalty must have its limits. The debate that followed was bitterly partisan. This is not about the Ukraine. It's about power. Donald Trump has it and House Democrats want it. And so with no crime, no victim, no evidence, no proof, no agenda for America, this impeachment charade marches on. History will record the Democrats' legacy as a betrayal of the Constitution. I think when the history of this time is written, it will record that when my colleagues found that they lacked the courage to stand up to this unethical president, they consoled themselves by attacking those who did. Democrats made the case the president brought this history. upon himself. He tried to cheat, he got caught, he confessed, and then he obstructed the investigation into his misconduct. America has been here before. First with Andrew Johnson in 1868. Richard Nixon resigned in 1974 when it became clear he'd be impeached for Watergate. Most recently, 20 plus years ago, Bill Clinton was impeached for lying about his affair with a White House intern. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. When the Senate held Clinton's trial... The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. Chief Justice William Rehnquist presided. The Republicans failed to get the two-thirds vote required to remove him. This time, we're going to see Chief Justice John Roberts. What can we expect from him? I think we can expect from Roberts um, the kind of ministerial authority that Rehnquist brought to it. It's called a trial. How much is it actually like a trial that we would be familiar with? 
This is not at all like a criminal trial. It's really important for viewers to understand that. Um, the same kind of federal rules of evidence, the criminal procedure uh, that we typically have in a criminal trial, those don't apply here. Democrats are facing a real uphill battle in the Senate as they hope to convict the president. They are already jockeying the Republican leader Mitch McConnell and the Democratic leader Chuck Schumer over what exactly this trial is going to look like when they come back in January. Bill Clinton was well into his second term when he was impeached. Not this time. Michigan. Thank you, Michigan. This time, the election is less than a year away. Tonight, President Trump argued that works today. for him. Crazy Nancy Pelosi's House Democrats have branded themselves with an eternal mark of shame. And it really is. It's a disgrace. Members of Congress in swing districts and battleground states are already feeling the heat. Let's, let's try to have a civil conversation, okay? Just listen to Michigan Democrat Alyssa Slotkin. So I will be voting yes on obstruction of Congress. This week, at a boisterous town hall meeting, she tried to rationalize her vote to impeach even though she knows it might be political suicide. Obviously, I know and I can hear that this is a very controversial decision, and I knew that. And all I can ask from the people who are listening is that um, while we may not agree, I, I hope you believe me when I tell you that I made this decision out of principle. We're a 50-50 country. We have been for a while. And all of the debates and all of the hearings hasn't seemed to budge anybody very much. One of the things the Democrats are realizing in that impeaching Donald Trump, it's different. They're not just impeaching a president. They're impeaching a movement that has remained 100 percent loyal to him. For every Trump voter loud and proud at that rally tonight, there are others who feel just as passionately the other way, like Michelle Wong. Yes! I've heard uh, that people believe, uh, those of us in the Midwest and in Michigan in particular, that we're not paying attention to impeachment. We don't care. And I think that is grossly incorrect. The progressive group Move On organized rallies for them in cities across the country last night. Michelle attended the rally in Kalamazoo, Michigan. In 2016, Michigan's 16 electoral votes significantly helped Donald Trump. Kalamazoo was just one of eight Michigan counties that favored Hillary Clinton over Trump. I foresee many more uh, stops in Michigan for not only Trump, but the Democratic presidential candidates. And it's going to be a very active um, political season for us. And we're ready. And we're going to really show them what Michigan is all about in the next election. Michigan's had the best year it's ever had. A fiery start to what's likely to be a hard-fought election. Thank you. Thank you, Michigan. Thank you. I'm David Wright for Nightline in New York. GMA will have the latest impeachment news in the morning. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.